What's up, Taiwan? I'm Ethan Liu with 10 Minutes of News from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan's stateless spouses are speaking out in hopes of changing the country's naturalization rules. Reese Ayers reports. Trapped in Taiwan. That's how some stateless spouses here describe themselves. Mostly women, they came to Taiwan dreaming of a better future for themselves, but instead lost their identity cards. That's because of a change in the naturalization process in 2016 that left some stuck halfway through. Like A Xing, who came to Taiwan from Vietnam 21 years ago to marry a Taiwanese man. Years ago, A Xing had already given up her Vietnamese citizenship, as required by Taiwan's old naturalization rules, and was working on meeting the residency requirement. But an update to the law made it so that immigrants could first be granted Taiwanese citizenship as long as they could provide proof they renounced their original citizenship within a year. However, some foreign spouses found that marriage can be a weak link in their naturalization process. Taiwan's Nationality Act now says that those suspected of fake marriage could have their applications dropped completely. Such was the case for A Xing, who works away from her family. Now, some are fighting to regain their identity, with the help of new legislation. Malaysian-born DPP legislator Lo Mei Ling, who herself became naturalized in Taiwan, is proposing an amendment to protect these foreign spouses from becoming stateless during naturalization. Many of the estimated 100 stateless people currently in Taiwan are thought to be stuck in limbo because of a change in the law. Experts say the immigration agency can't ignore these people. Advocates hope the law can be changed to provide a new start to help these stateless people in Taiwan. First, to restore their identities. Then, to restore their faith in the country they'd once dreamed of. Eason Chen, Reeses, and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus. The town in southern Taiwan is turning driftwood into musical instruments. Laura Stewart takes a look at how a local community is transforming its culture. A community music group playing rather special instruments. These violins are made out of driftwood collected from the Zhengwen Reservoir in Taiwan's southern Jiayi County. It's part of a push to get older people in Taiwan involved in creative activities. Here they're taught how to make violins, that they then learn to play. It's become a point of interest for the town of Dabu attracting people from around the country to join the orchestra. And while recycling waste helps the environment, the program also brings added quality to the lives of Taiwan's older people, an ever-expanding group as the country's population rapidly ages. While the violins are crafted and played by these seniors, they'll also be sold on for others to enjoy. Blending the natural environment with musical tradition, the residents of Dabu are adding a new tune to retired life. 
Dolphine Chen and Laurel Stewart for Taiwan Plus. A prison in Brazil has replaced its guard dogs with geese. They hope two legs would be better than four when it comes to stopping prison breaks. Leslie Liao reports. With these geese honking and waddling about, you'd think this is a park, but it's not. It's a prison in southern Brazil. And these geese are not pets. They're called geese agents here, and their job is to patrol the prison perimeter and make sure nobody escapes. Mas em relação aqui, São Pedro de Alcântara, eu acho que a própria localização, né? A noite é muito silenciosa, até durante o dia, como tu pode constatar, é um lugar bem silencioso, e a noite mais ainda. E também acho que a logística da unidade, como ela foi feita, né? Como tu pode comprovar o espaço e, e, e outros fatores favorecem para esse tipo de, 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 de segurança, no caso do, do bando de ganso. Né? The birds patrol a green space between the prison's interior fence and the main outer wall. They're very sensitive to strange movements and honk loudly when disturbed. Officials here say they are not only more vigilant, but also cheaper than dogs. Então, por, por esses dois quesitos aí já dá para a gente ter em mente, ter ideia de que, que é muito mais rentável e muito mais viável a criação de, de ganso do que cachorro na, na questão da segurança no, na unidade. Né? These feathered friends are tougher than they look, and prisoners do not want to mess with them. Leon Lin, Sandy Chi, and Leslie Liao for Taiwan Plus. A king of the ocean is becoming a rare find in South America. Harrell Hughes reports on how the king crab is disappearing from Argentina's coast. A dish fit for a king, the king crab. It's a local specialty in the city of Ushuaia in Argentina, at the southernmost tip of South America, Tierra de Fuego. Tourists from all over the world travel here to try the Patagonian delicacy. But restaurants are noticing a change. In Ushuaia, today, the restaurants are taking the product out of their cards because they don't have it, they don't have it, they don't have it. It's not there, it's not there, it's not the proposal of the cards in the providers that they normally had. Fishers have seen the decline coming for a while. El tema de la merma de la centolla, yo te diría que podría ser unos cuatro o cinco años atrás que empezó a, a decaer un poco, según en qué zona, ¿sí? Scientists have been studying the king crab population since the 1970s and say this year is different. The population is now in a vulnerable position. They point to two factors, fishing patterns and climate change. One possible solution is to cultivate king crab larvae in the hope of releasing them into the wild. The scientists say more must be done. No olvidarnos que también es un recurso muy importante para nuestra región, eh, que tenemos que proteger, es parte de nuestro ecosistema eh, y también es parte de nuestro acervo cultural eh, como emblema incluso de nuestra región. The king crab is not just a delicious dish, but also an icon of Tierra de Fuego. Conservationists hope its king claws won't disappear from Cape Horn. Dolphine Chen and Harrell Hughes for Taiwan Plus. Robotic T-Rexes at a museum in Taichung are suiting up for the Year of the Dragon. Staff at the Central City's National Museum of Natural Science are continuing their Lunar New Year's tradition of dressing up their animatronic apex predators. This year's theme is Space Adventure and features costumes designed by a local university. Visitors will need to act quickly if they want to see the two T-Rexes ready for takeoff. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website and follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, take a look at stone sculptures by Kenyan sculptor Elkana Omgesa. I'm Ethan Take care, and I'll see you next time.